Hey there, it's Nicole over at DarnGoodYarn.com and we get so many questions, like kind of every day, on how to ball your yarn. If you're new to Darn Good Yarn, um, a lot of our yarns come in what we call skeins. Um, so it's a little bit different than your big box stores um, because generally they have center pull balls that you can pull the yarn off of. So in this video I'm going to show you how to actually take your yarn and turn it into a ball so you can use it. And just This is just a really quick and basic um, video if you're not familiar with it. If you think though that you're going to start using more of like handmade premium yarns like the one tip I'll tell you and I remember when I was like first learning how to knit um, was that I would you have to kind of invest in, in a yarn swift because what a yarn swift does is it stretches the yarn in a way that it maintains the integrity of the twist of the yarn. Um, so the methods I'm going to show you, these are like quick and dirty, you know, if you don't have a Swift or if you're traveling, and I've used them as well, but if you start to really get into using the higher grade yarns, um, you're going to want to invest in a Swift. It's just another tool in your, um, in your crafting uh, repertoire. So I got two of actually my favorite yarns. These are like original uh, darn good yarn goodies. Um, this is our firecracker yarn, and this is 100% recycled silk and um, this is actually hand spun and I took this I actually am using this as our example because it's a little bit more difficult to wind than I think some of our other yarn so I just want to show you that and the reason is because it's hand spun in some areas it does get over twisted and when you have this little extra bit of over twist that's where the yarn swift comes in handy because it creates a tension but let me just show you how to uh, work into this. And then I also got ribbon as well. Ribbon sometimes, in, uh, this is our Sari Silk Ribbon. This is in Pickled Pear. Um, we have different colors coming all the time. This can sometimes really intimidate uh, people, so I just want to show you this one as well. So I'll just show you the basics on how to get it started, and then you know, if you have any other questions, reach out to us, but hopefully this gets you started off on the right foot. So I have two chairs here. There's a couple of different methods to my madness that I'll show you. Um, I like to just use one chair and you'll see why in a second. So what you do is you get this in the mail and you're like, okay, cool, this is beautiful, now what? Here's, um, here's what you do. So you're gonna see, I just sort of pop out the top here and it kind of comes apart like this. Now you see these little strings? These are generally on every single one of our skeins. And this is how it actually originally starts, like it gets packaged. So these strings are holding the skein together so it doesn't become a big knotted mess. And now what you can do, is don't cut the strings yet. <laughs> I used to do that and I'd get a huge, um, a huge rat's nest. So what you do is I'm just gonna bring this over. This is the back of a chair. Any chair really does the trick. Um, you just loop it around the back. Now in some videos that I've seen, which I think is pretty great, if you have a larger circumference, you can actually put two chairs together and then loop this over and then it creates a little bit more tension and you kind of just drag them out. But this is a smaller circumference, so just one chair is needed for this, um, this skein. And now here's the fun tricky part that I'm gonna try to do on camera, which is always difficult, is finding the end of the yarn. So, we're gonna search for this, and I probably could have like found this before we started the video, but that's okay. Here it is. So there's a little knot here, um, and just for the sake of, oh, it came right out, so I just pulled this, it's a little slip knot, and now I have the beginning of the yarn. As I go around, I'm just gonna take my scissors and snip this white thread, and be sure to not actually snip your yarn. Um, I've done that. I'm just telling you all of my mistakes I've done over time. Um, you name it, I've done it, and isn't that the whole kind of point of it all? So there's a couple of different methods. Um, some people like to do a center pull ball. Um, for me, I just, just for the sake of this video, I'll just show you how to do just a basic ball. So you just start, wrap it around your fingers. You can hold this off to the side, and then you can start another one, and then you can start to make a center pull ball. But just for this, I'm just gonna do a basic ball so you can see what I'm, I'm working with here. So I just do a couple of quick wraps around my finger, and then I slide it off, and I hold it, you see like this, and then I just continue to wrap. I do you know, a quick like five or six wraps this way, and now I'm just going to work around. I'm going to stand up, I'm going to work around, and I'm going to move this little kind of mishmash of yarn in my hands, and you're going to work around, you're going to go around and around. And this is something really fun that once you get it started, and I'm just clipping off the rest of these white threads, this is something really fun once you get it started that like, you know, a kid could do, like a child could help you with. Um, so round and round and round. This goes. 
And I generally, you know, people sometimes say, hey, what about like an actual ball winder to use on this? I will tell you that with some of the handmade yarns that we have, I don't think that a ball winder is necessarily the best tool just because, you know, it is handmade. There are some over twisted spots, which is fine. I mean, you'll work those out as you start to work your um, yarn up. But um, I think it kind of makes more of a headache than anything else. So you're just going to continue this pro process going around the ball and, and you're really just making a ball of yarn now. And then once you're done with that, you're set. So I'm just going to put this off to the side so you can see it works up pretty quickly when you do that. I usually do this while I'm watching TV or something as well, so that's kind of nice. So there's that. Let me show you the ribbon as well. So with the ribbon, again, we're going to um, just take this top out. You're just going to pop it off. And you're looking for the circumference. Again, take the label off as well. I'll cut this off. It's good to always save your label somewhere too because generally on all yarn labels you're going to have care instructions, engage, and other information about the yarn that will come in handy. So don't throw those out. They're, they're usually a, a really good treasure trove of info. Now with this um, ribbon you can see that the yarn is actually used to tie the skein together. Here's your big circle that you're looking for. The other tip about the circle is when sometimes when you unskein it, you know, a piece might flop over and get folded over. If that happens, you want to really make sure all of the lengths of yarn are going in the same direction because if that gets folded over and you put it over the back of your chair, it's going to be a really big knotted net, uh, mess. Believe me, you don't want to have to deal with that. So we're going to put the circle on. I know that it's you know pretty well kept. And another way to tell that you don't have any like mess ups in terms of um, the direction of the yarns and them getting messed up on either side is that you can see the threads that hold the skein together all the way around. You see that? So here's what you do. You stick this on the back of your chair and again it's just a matter of finding the start of the yarn. Move these tags to the side. So here's my start of the yarn and I am awful at taking knots out of yarn on camera so I'm going to cut them which is the number one like cardinal rule you don't do but I have to save some time on this. I'm going to be watching this video forever. So here, here's my beginning of the yarn. And if I had smaller back chairs, I could do a double chair, uh, chair to chair on this. And I'm just going to cut this little, or pull apart this little white thread that holds the rest of the skein together. And then again here. And now with this again, move my scissors. You're just going to start and you're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I'll slide it off my fingers, and then I'll just start to wrap it around. And you're just gonna go around and around. And that's pretty much what you do. Now, if you had a yarn swift, you would load this on, and you see how it's kind of like, it's getting a little bit flumpy. Flumpy is a very official yarn word. Um, <laughs> if you had a yarn swift, it would keep all of this really taut and a nice tension so that you didn't get any, um, any potential knots or anything like that or any uh, unintentional yarn breakage. So you just do this, go around. Again, you can watch TV while you do this. Um, you start to get really fast with it. When I first started Darn Good Yarn 10 years ago, I used to do this every single order and then I just couldn't keep up with it anymore. So I'm sorry, you have to do it now. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. That's how you ball your yarn that you get from us. If you have any questions, reach out to us at info at darngoodyarn.com. You can reach us on social media. Just look for our hashtag or our, our, our handle, Darn Good Yarn. And uh, that's it. I'll talk to you later. Bye.